Hi, and welcome back to our video series on Microsoft Word 2010. In this video, I want to start talking about the file menu right up here. Now, in previous versions of Word, this has worked uh, much differently. In the 2003 and previous version, there was actually a file menu. In the 2007 version of Microsoft Word, it was replaced with something they called the Microsoft Office button. In 2010, when you click on the word file, you're going to see that you get a file panel here that's got quite a bit of information and a menu over here to your left. Now, the first three commands that I want to talk about are the open, save, and save as command, and then finally the close command. Now, save and save as both do the same thing a little bit differently. They both take whatever you're currently working on and save it to a disk. When I click on save, you're going to see that nothing happens or nothing appears to happen. But it actually did save any changes in this document. If I click on save as, you're going to see I get a dialog box. I did that a little fast. I'm going to go ahead and click cancel here, click back on file, and I'll go ahead and click on save as. And again, you're going to see I get a dialog box up where I can name the document as well as choose a folder to place it in. Now you're going to see a navigation tree over here to the left of the Save As dialog box. And in this you can get to your favorite places. You can also get into any of your Windows 7 libraries or if you're on Windows XP you can get into your um, My Documents folder. You can also get access to your network and any drives that you have. You can see I have local disk C here, my main hard drive, but I also have a, a couple of flash drives here, one called Videos 2 and one called Samples. And then we also have a network icon right down here. I'm not actually hooked up to a network, so it's not actually going to show me anything when I click on that. If there are items underneath one of these uh, items in the navigation tree, you're going to see a little plus sign come up. If I click on that plus sign, you're going to see those items that are in there. So I can see my documents library here. There's my My Documents folder. And I'm actually just going to click on that because that's where I want to save this document. And then I'm going to go ahead and come down here and name the document. Now, if the document is a Word 2007 or 2010 document, it's going to have the letter X on the end of the file extension. The file extension is the period and the three letters that comes at the end, or normally three letters that comes at the end of a file name. Here you're going to see I just have .doc, and that indicates that it's a Word 2003 or earlier version. Now if I don't put an extension on, it's actually going to choose the extension for me based upon what I've selected here when it says save file as type. So I'm going to go ahead and just rename this sample document. And again, I don't have to put an extension on, but I can choose a file type here and it will automatically put the extension on for me. If I want the most recent version, I want to select Word document .docx. And again, the X indicates that it's a 2007-2010 format. And I'm going to make sure I'm in my documents library, and then I'm going to go ahead and click Save. So I've now saved that document in that library. But because the version that this document was originally in was an earlier version, and I'm updating the document, it's actually going to ask me, it's going to ask me to confirm that I want to save it in the new file format. And the reason for that is, if you try and send this document to, let's say, somebody using Word 2000, and it's in the later format, they won't be able to open your document up. But if it's in the older format, just the plain Word 97 to 2003 format, any version of Word will be able to open it up. I'm going to go ahead and click Yes here, or I'm going to go ahead and click OK, because I do want to update it to the latest format. And now my document is saved. Now if I come here to the File tab again, you're going to see I have the Close option. I'm just going to go ahead and click close and you'll see the document closes and I can no longer do anything. If I click on file I can come back here to the open command and I get the same kind of dialog box where I can go through here 
and um, choose a drive or a place on my network. Or I can go into any of my Windows 7 libraries, including my My Documents folder. So I'm going to go ahead and select my My Documents folder, and there's that sample document that I opened up earlier. I'm going to go ahead and click Open, and there's the document. Now there were a few other options that I want to show you in that Save As dialog box. So I'm going to come back here to File and click Save As again. And again, remember these options are available in Save As, but it's the exact same um, dialog box for Open. The first thing I want to show you is how to create a new folder. If I click on uh, Documents and go into my My Documents folder, I can create a new document folder there by clicking on New Folder. I'm just going to go ahead and click New Folder, and I'm going to go ahead and just type Project A Documents. So I've created a new folder. I can double click on it, and I'm going to go ahead and say this is Project A um, Notes, or whatever I want to call it. I'm going to go ahead and click Save, and that has now been saved in that new folder. If I come back to File, I can click Close and the item goes away. I can go back to File and Open. And you can see here my most recently opened documents are coming up here. And you can see there's the memo document, the, ori the original document, and then I've saved it in a couple of different versions here. These documents will basically list down until you've got um, the maximum number of documents. And you can see here that I can set the maximum number of quick access documents right here. So I might go ahead and increase that to 12. And now I'll see the most 12 recent documents. And I actually haven't opened 12 documents, so I won't see them. Once you exceed that limit, the oldest document is just going to move off the list. That doesn't mean that the document has been uh, deleted. It just no longer means it's a recent document. If you want to pin a document to your recent documents list so it doesn't scroll through or it doesn't rotate through as you open and save other documents, you can use this little push pin right here. So for example, let's say I want to be able to get quick access all the time to this memo document. I can just click that push pin. It's going to move to the top of the list and now it'll always be there for me. You can also see the recent places that you've saved or opened items right over here. And again, you've got the push pin if you want to make sure you don't um, um, lose any of the, uh, lose a particular folder. So we've got those items. And you can also notice I've gone here to the recent tab by clicking right over here. Now I'm going to go ahead and choose that Project A document folder right there, and you're going to see that it brought me back into the Open dialog box. Brought me in here, I can click my document, and then just go ahead and click Open and it comes back up. One more big improvement to the Open and Save dialog boxes was the adding of Favorites. If I click on File here and go back into Save As, you're going to see Favorites right up here at the top. All you have to do to add a place or delete a place from your favorites is simply work over here. I'm going to come back into My Documents and let's say that inside of the My Documents folder the Project A Documents is a folder I'm going to go to frequently. I'm going to right click on that and you can see I've got various options here. But one thing that you don't have an option here for is adding it to the favorites. And that's because all you have to do is drag it over there. If I point at Project A document and just drag it up onto favorites, it now is added to that list. And all I have to do to go in there is click that item. If I want to remove it, I can simply right click on it and say remove. Or I can rename it from here as well. I'll go ahead and click remove. You'll see that item disappears. 